Hey, so I'm going into my final year of my math undergrad and I wanted to reflect back a bit and talk about some of the courses that I've taken so far um, in my math degree that have been the most challenging for me. Um, the first one we're going to start off with is the classic real analysis. It's probably on almost everyone else's list of toughest math courses. Um, and it's th there's a good reason. It's kind of hard. It, it's tough. So when I went into real analysis, um, I had already taken an intro to analysis or intro to proofs in calculus course before. So I was feeling, I was feeling set. I was good to go. Um, the first midterm, uh, I did really well on, and I was like, okay, psh, this course is going to be a breeze. It had pretty much been review of the intro to proofs course that I'd already taken. Um, and then I stopped uh, putting as much effort in and did not do so well on the second midterm um, and was caught off guard by the level of difficulty of the proofs. I was not doing the practice problems that were recommended. Um, and I remember like very vividly at the beginning of the course, the instructor was like, if you want to do well in this course, you have to do the practice problems. You're in third year now, uh, there's no way around it. You just have to do the practice problems or else you're not going to do well in the course. And I was like, okay, cool, got it. And I didn't do the practice problems and then I didn't do so well on that second midterm. The final it ended up being okay, but still not as good as I had hoped. Real analysis is proving the underpinnings of calculus and um, formalizing calculus. Um, you're talking about the real numbers. It seems pretty boring to put it that way, but you're talking about sequences and series and um, you're working with inequalities. And I think why it can be hard sometimes is because uh, you're working on a problem, you start with an inequality and you're trying to get somewhere else to some other inequality. And there are all these like, you know, inequality that you're supposed to know to use to get through this chain of reasoning and it, it's um, kind of hard. Never could get really good visuals. Uh, for me, it's always easier if I can picture the problem visually. Um, and there was a lot of just fumbling around with inequalities and it was not clear how to get from point A to point B when you're trying to write this proof. If I took that course again, I would do the practice problems and be more engaged with the TA and the prof, like do the problems and bring my questions to them. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of work. The next course that I found really challenging was abstract algebra. It's also um, a third year math course. And I feel like I had been spoiled a bit in the earlier uh, courses I had taken because there was so much really good educational math content online that I could find. Like I remember watching Three Blue and Brown's Linear Algebra series before I took Linear Algebra or as I was taking Linear Algebra and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. You can see everything happening. Um, I understand it. It's great. Um, and I had seen a couple videos. I think Three Blue and Brown did a video on linear, um, on abstract algebra. And I was like, oh wow, okay, it's about symmetries. It's about like unlocking these deep symmetries within like mathematical structures. Sounds cool, right? And then I got to the course and it was a lot of really technical or tedious proofs. Um, and it just didn't live up to my expectations. Uh, I remember I was taking the course and the textbook was really dry, like really just boring and again didn't do many practice problems um and at one point i remember like we were you know writing out Cayley tables which is like sort of just brute force calculations which are not my favorite thing um and i stumbled across um Cayley table art um and it's like really cool and really pretty and i wanted the prof to like go over this Cayley table and connect it to like what we're doing and explain the colors and the symmetries. Um, but there wasn't really that same enthusiasm that I had found um, from other courses. Yeah, so I also didn't do enough practice problems and 
yeah, I didn't have the best time in that course. A lot of the content I think is really cool, but I wasn't just fully understanding, so I couldn't get how cool it was. The last course I'm going to mention that was really challenging for me was uh, stats, intro to probability. Um, and this is a bit interesting because stats sort of has a reputation for being easier than other math courses. Um, and I remember even in high school, there was like a, a data management course that was basic stats and probability. Um, and a lot of students didn't take calculus and took that one instead because it was easier. Um, and even in high school, I didn't find that one easier than the calculus course because it seems to be based a lot on intuition. Uh, it was a lot harder for me to use my intuition to reason through a problem. And often I would use my intuition I was like, okay, here I have an answer. This is the probability of, you know, getting this card in a deck or whatever. And it would be wrong. And I would be like, what? And in a, a lot of uh, combinatorics problems, I still am like overwhelmed with how to approach them. Um, as opposed to in other courses, there's sort of like a template you can follow or some tricks. I'm not saying that's not true in stats, but still yet I, I haven't, I don't feel as comfortable with reasoning about combinatorics and probability, not nearly as much as like, another area of math. The Monty Hall problem is a really good example of a problem in, in probability that um, was really controversial because mathematicians couldn't even agree with themselves on their arguments on coming to a, a conclusion for an answer. Um, Number File has a really good video on Monty Hall, but I remember for an assignment we had to explain the Monty Hall problem and a solution to it. Um, and we were, me and my friend who's also in the course, were just like arguing for so long about it and not arguing, but I was just so confused and I didn't know how to gauge whether my reasoning was actually valid or not. Yeah, I still don't have intuition for conditional probabilities and that kind of thing, which I'd like to change. Also a big reason why these courses were challenging for me was because they did happen during COVID. So I was in online school and I didn't have many opportunities to interact with my profs, my TAs, or other people in my class. I think um, if, you're, if you can, if you're in school and it's in person, the most important thing you can do if you want to do well in your courses is to make friends with people who also want to do well in those courses and work on the assignments together and ask questions and just generally be engaged with the material and with the people um, around you, your profs and your TAs and your peers. Um, and it's just way more fun that way. Uh, for me, at least, it's not, it's not as fun struggling by myself with a math problem with no one around to help me if I get really stuck. Um, so yeah, general advice is do the practice problems and do them with friends. Um, and if there's something you don't understand, ask ask for help because that's what you're that's what you're in school for is to learn on the flip side the most fun math courses i've had have been courses where i was engaging with the prof often to ask questions um and engaging with other people in the class and asking questions and doing the assignments together so that's a big it's a big part of it don't think you can do it alone because you you probably you probably can but it won't be fun and it won't be worth it let me know if there are any math courses that you've taken that have been really challenging or that you're going to take i think i have a couple this year that uh might be a little difficult um but yeah thanks thanks for tuning in and i'll see you next time see ya